This is 13 News Now. Well, downpours start the weekend. Thank you for watching 13 News Now at noon. I'm Lucy Bustamante. Andre has the day off. We had flood advisories in Gates and Hertford counties in North Carolina earlier today. Hampton Roads saw some heavy rain as well and a downpour just a little while ago in Ghent. So you're looking live over downtown Norfolk on the bottom of your screen right now. And you can see that the clouds are still very much hanging around. So, Tim, is the whole weekend going to be a washout or you're still thinking just tomorrow afternoon? No, it's not. Yeah, tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening. You know, it really wasn't a washout today so much, really depending on where you were. If you're down in North Carolina, still coming down pretty heavily there. But elsewhere, I mean, really isolated right through downtown Norfolk, out in Virginia Beach and Chesapeake. Very heavy rain coming on down now in Chowan. Uh, per Quimmins, Pasquotank, and over in Camden in the Elizabeth City area right now. Here's a close-up look of uh, downtown Norfolk where the showers have kind of tapered off for a little while now. Had some heavier downpours earlier. They have scooted off towards the east, and you look down to the south in central Chesapeake and over in Virginia Beach, a little more there. But really widespread, very heavy rain here out by Lynch's Corner, Mittensville, Hertford, over to Elizabeth City right now. Even a few rumbles of thunder in the mix there as well. In the last six hours, two to as much as three inches fell. That's what required the flood advisory that was up earlier that was allowed to expire at 11 o'clock. Now all of this is slowly sagging its way off to the east and southeast. Behind it, a little bit of a break in the action. And that's what we'll see for the next 12 hours or so before more rain works on in here with a cold front that will arrive here tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening with some showers and storms likely in here during that time as well with some more very heavy rain. So 83 today, mostly cloudy, scattered showers and storms continue. We'll talk more about what to expect for that weekend forecast and time things out for you hour by hour in just a few minutes. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Well, officials in Chincoteague are taking steps to ensure the safety of the town's future water supply. The town council voted to spend $28,000 to drill an exploratory well. It comes after they found chemicals used in firefighting foam was actually in the well. That foam came from the nearby NASA Wallops firefighting training area. And while they search for a new source, NASA is treating the affected water to make sure it is safe to drink. I think it's crazy. I think somebody crazy put that up there. It reminds me of, you know, my past. I don't, I don't want to step into that no more. When I see something like that, I don't want to bring my kids up here, honestly. The outcry is over this controversial ad located at the downtown Norfolk Transit Center. We first brought you this story earlier this week. Some people thought the picture was inappropriate due to the open display of drugs. Our reporter Jacqueline Lee spoke with the people behind the ad. Well, this is the ad causing some controversy. As you can see here, here's a man, a syringe, a pill bottle, and a bong. Some people think it goes too far, but the organization that put it here is speaking up. We're glad that the ad got people talking. Corey Moore is with the Norfolk LGBT Life Center, the organization responsible for the ad. So the ad says, has getting high made you take a risk? And then it says, uh, let's get back on track with a free HIV or STD test. So we're really asking the viewer to consider their behavior lately, particularly their sexual behavior. Um, and in a non-judgmental way, asking them if, if it's made them take a risk. A risk that could have transmitted STDs or HIV. The ad is part of a campaign launched by the center, encouraging everyone, particularly substance users, to get tested. And that's the point of the ad, have them come in, take that first step, take that test, uh, find out their status, uh, and then we can help spread the control of disease from there. When asked about the controversial image, Moore says the ad clearly wraps around the terminal so viewers would take in the whole ad, not just the drug illustration. I don't think that there is anything controversial about um, an illustration that focuses on an issue that is a real challenge for our community. An issue that Moore says needs to be addressed. The stigma out there around getting tested alone and then the stigma around substance use is, is a, a pretty big. Uh, and it discourages a lot of people from accessing health care. In Norfolk, Jacqueline Lee. 13 News Now. New at noon, poli police say that Shanita Crippen assaulted a woman, then mooned her in Newport News. According to the police report, Crippen asked for a woman for a cigarette. When the woman told her she didn't have any, that's when Crippen pulled a box cutter. When she walked away, she pulled down her pants in the direction of the victim. Police are charging Shanita Crippen with assault and indecent exposure. 
Well, now to the deepening crisis between the United States and North Korea. The president tweeting out a new warning today as tensions rise around the world with every tweet. ABC's Emily Rao has the latest from D.C. A fresh warning for North Korea Friday via President Trump's Twitter feed. Military solutions are now fully in place, locked and loaded, should North Korea act unwisely. That tweet following Thursday's fiery rhetoric. Let's see what he does with Guam. He does something in Guam. It will be an event the likes of which nobody's seen before what will happen in North Korea. The president doubling down after North Korea called his comments about fire and fury nonsense. Going on to announce plans to launch four missiles into the waters near Guam as early as next week. The tragedy of war is well enough known. Defense Secretary James Mattis trying to pump the brakes on the escalating tension, stressing the need to avoid war. You can see the American effort is diplomatically led. It has diplomatic traction. It is gaining diplomatic results. In Pyongyang, North Koreans putting on a brave face, insisting they aren't afraid. And people in the U.S. territory of Guam heading into the weekend with mixed emotions. I think one of the safest places to be is wherever they're aiming. Actually, I've been looking at the news last night and it's pretty crazy. And as the timeline for that threat nears, calls for calm. We have a little bit of time, we think, because they tend to do what they say they're going to do. A little bit of time for diplomacy to, to prevent what could be a very serious uh, aggressive act by North Korea. The governor of Guam saying today there's no change in the threat level, but also urging residents to prepare in case of an attack and telling them to have fun because it's the weekend. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. Well, the feud between President Trump and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell continues this morning. The president is not happy after several setbacks passing key legislation. Many top priority items like health care, taxes and infrastructure have failed to gain traction. Meanwhile, McConnell says it's just part of the legislative process. Our new president had, of course, not been in this line of work before and I think had excessive expectation. I'm very disappointed in Mitch, but if he gets these bills passed, I'll be very happy with him. I'll be the first to admit it. Going after McConnell could be a very risky political move for the president. Many top Republicans are already siding with the Senate Majority Leader, saying that the president must take some responsibility, too. Free speech rules on social media are a bit blurry, and now the debate is heating up as more and more elected officials have started blocking people on their social media accounts. Several groups are suing or warning politicians across the United States to stop that practice, including President Donald Trump. They are calling it a free speech violation. It's raising questions about what public officials can and cannot do on social media. Most officials say that they're simply trying to get rid of the abusive messages.